Good morning. 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 We welcome you to worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Happy Reformation Sunday to you all. Um, If you haven't gotten a chance to check out the 95 Theses on the door, it's a great reminder of how this all got started and uh, the courage that led our church to where it is today. I want to start out by saying thanks to, um, I was under the weather part of the week, and so I'm very thankful many of you filled in on a lot of capacities, and so thank you for that, and I am feeling much better. So thank you to many of you who filled in for various things or um, accepted things being canceled, so thank you for that. I'm also very, very grateful that uh, Pastor Martin Lucian is preaching today. Um, His PhD is in Reformation Studies, and so I figured he should be the preacher of this day, and I'm very grateful that he was willing to do that today. Um, Today, from 4 to 5, is the Trunk or Treat. Um, Please spread the word. We've got lots of candy and non-candy prizes and trunks and all sorts of fun things. It will still be outside because it's supposed to warm up a little bit, um, but people can uh, come as quickly or as long as they'd like. So please join us for that, and um, please spread the word to families. And if you want to donate some candy or prizes, it is not too late. So uh, feel free to give that to myself or Brenda um, today. Tomorrow, we will have uh, Hilda Brisson's funeral here. From 10 to 11 is the visitation. 11 o'clock is the service with lunch to follow. And then after that is um, the graveside down in Sioux City. So um, I don't know if everyone's met Mike, um, Hilda's son. Can I have you just say hello in the back? So that is Mike, and um, our condolences to his family and um, to everyone who is mourning her passing. Special word of thanks to many of you who have um, pulled together that service so well um, in my absence last week. Um, A reminder that the Every Meal delivery is tomorrow not Thursday, so if you would normally deliver for every meal, just a reminder that that is tomorrow, not Thursday. Tuesday morning, 7 a.m., Bible study will happen as normal. Wednesday, we have KFC after school. It has been an awesome growing group, so if you have not gotten to check it out or be involved, I encourage you to do so. Uh, Sandy did the lunch uh, last week and nearly ran out uh, because it's just a great, wonderful, good group. So. Um, please uh, join us for that. 5.15 is dinner, 6 o'clock is worship. Um, This week's confirmation is here at First Lutheran at 6.30. Choir is also at 6.30, and youth group is at 7.30. Thursday at 10.15, we'll have the sunshine service. We had a month off, but we'll have the sunshine service Thursday at at 10.15, apologize, 10.15. And then um, Friday, a reminder, Friday to Saturday is the confirmation retreat, one of the options for that. Talk to Brenda for details. Um, If you have any questions, uh, we need to have your health forms and whatnot in. Uh, We are leaving at 5 o'clock on Friday and coming back at 6.45 on Saturday. A reminder that next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. Uh, We will be remembering members who have passed away Uh, during this past year, and also people who have passed away in our lives with um, one individual candle that we'll name lots of names for. So one for all the members who have passed away and a candle for everyone else um, who we are remembering. For that general candle, if you have a loved one that you would like remembered and you won't be there that day, uh, please Put it in the chat, if you're watching online, put it in the chat under today's service, or send me an email at McCormick at gmail.com, or send me a text message at 612-636-1533, or otherwise let me know, and I'll be sure that we name that person, but there will also be a time when you all can name your own loved ones. So um, that is how that will go next week. If you have questions, Let me know. Um, Also a reminder that our zone service, um, headed up by Sandy Papama, is doing a brunch next week. It's always a good week to reconnect 
to families who have um, had loved ones pass away. So I encourage you to stay for that brunch. Um, they are going to do egg bakes, fruit cups, breads and, and beverages, and it will be a free will donation, and it will go towards the, co the general budget. So free will donation towards the general budget, and I'm sure it will be very good, so please plan on staying. Also, next Sunday the 5th is another session for scripture and yoga at 4 o'clock. Um, we continue to keep in our prayers. Barb Waji continues to struggle significantly. Um, so that is a part of the Irwin, Schaefer, and Waji families. And she continues to be in the hospital struggling. Uh, thanks be to God, Denny Zerke has transitioned to the Encompass Center. So we are grateful for that change. And of course, we are grateful that Ra Rosemary Merkel has transitioned home. Are there any other announcements? Good morning. Good morning. As some of you may know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we always like to leave it to the last minute. No, uh, Reformation <laughs> Sunday is a perfect day to also uh, let Pastor Jeanette know how much we appreciate her and her work here at First Lutheran. So many things that she does uh, that don't work as well without her. She gives of herself and her time more than she probably should um, and needs to be told it's okay to take some time off. But we appreciate her hard work. We appreciate that she's here. We are so glad to have you. Thank you for everything. announcements. With that, let's continue with the prayer of confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Let us put aside our good works and remember that we do sin and fall short of the glory of God. Lord of all, the demands of your righteousness are too hard for us to fulfill alone. So we rush off with this excuse and ignore your law. You forgive our iniquity and remember our sin no more. And we abuse this freedom as if it were a license to selfishness, self-indulgence, and self-righteousness. You give us the gift of grace atonement in the blood of your Son, yet we make it cheap without serious repentance. We fail to see the power of your faithfulness. We are your people, but we do not do it as our God. Forgive us, Lord, the sins we know in our heart. Save us, Lord, from the sins we hide. God of our refuge and strength, have mercy on us, right on our hearts. Amen. God does show us God's own righteousness and divine forbearance. Through the work of the Holy Spirit given to us, we may come to know the truth and be made free. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sets us free from our slavery to sin. Our sins are forgiven. Through his death and resurrection, a place is made for us in the household. And we may know that we and we may know be known as children of God, to the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. first reading is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, verses 1 through 17, and 25 through 29 as well. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When, when Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt, and they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore, lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke that he placed on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the older men who had attended his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? They answered him, If you will be a servant to this people today and serve them, 
and speak good words to them. When you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he disregarded the advice that the older men gave him and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him and now attended him. He said to them, what, what do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, lighten the yoke that your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him said to us, said to him, thus you should say to this people who spoke to you, your father made our yoke heavy, but you must lighten it up for us. Thus you should say to them, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had said, come to me again the third day. The king answered the people harshly. He disregarded the advice that the older men had given him and spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people because it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord that he might fulfill his word which the Lord had spoken by Ahia, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, son of Nebit. When all Israel saw that the king would not listen to them, the people answered the king, What, what share do, you ha do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, look now to your own house, O David. So Israel went away to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and resided there. He went out from there and built Penuel. Then Jeroboam said to himself, Now the kingdom may well revert to the house of David. If this people continues to go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jer Jerusalem, the heart of the people will turn again to their master. King Rehoboam of Judah, they will kill me if return and return to King Rehoboam of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. He said to the people, you have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. The word of the Lord. Be now we'll read, read the psalm responsively. We give you thanks, O God. We give you thanks calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. Though the earth and all its inhabitants crumble, I will make its pillars fast. Do not lift your horns so high nor speak with a proud neck. It is God who judges, who puts down one and lifts up another. For in the Lord's hand there is a cup full of spice and foaming wine. The Lord will pour it out, and all the wicked of the earth shall drink and drink in the grace. But I will rejoice forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. I will bring out all forms of the wicked, but the horns of the
What? Oh, exciting. Thank you. Good work. Are you all excited for Halloween? Yeah. What are you going to dress up as? What are you going to dress up as? Elsa. Elsa. That's a perfect costume. How about you? A zombie cheerleader. Awesome. <laughs> a, a princess? Princess Jasmine. Awesome. Do you think you'll get a lot of treats and candy and stuff? Very fun, very fun. Well, I hope you have a very fun and safe Halloween. And today we are celebrating something else. Anybody have any guesses? This is a hard one. What we're celebrating? We are having Tunk or Treat. Yeah, I hope you all come. What else? <laughs> it almost looks like Christmas. Cause what color do we? What color do we have a lot of? Red. This is a hard one. You got it. Reformation Sunday. So. When you came in, you probably saw a whole bunch of pieces of paper on the door. And it's a lot of words on those pieces of paper. But today we are remembering how our little group of Christianity, Lutheranism, got started. And it got started by a guy named Martin Luther. And we are happy that we get to be friends with Christians who are Methodists and Presbyterians and Catholics and all sorts of people. But today we celebrate Martin Luther and how he had a lot of courage to stand up for what he believed in. So I'm going to share with you one of um, my son Landon's first books, which is fitting as a dual pastor's kid. It is the Life of Martin Luther pop book. So here we go. What, how does Martin Luther look in this picture here? Scared, right? Is it look calm or windy? Windy, right? Wendy, it's lightning, yeah, you got it, it's lightning. So it's a pretty scary time for him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it says, many years ago, there lived a young man named Martin Luther. Young Martin was studying to be a lawyer, but one day he got caught in a terrible storm. He was so afraid that he promised God that he would become a monk if he escaped the storm. The storm died down and Martin Luther kept his promise. <coughs> Martin Luther, what does he look like he's doing in this pop-up? Because they probably can't see back there. He's <coughs> reading, right? Yeah. And this is probably the communion table like we have here, and the stained glass for the church. And does anybody know what that is? Quill. It's a quill. What do you do with a quill? Write. You write, <coughs> right? Put the ink in. So he wrote a lot. So we're going to learn about that. It says, Martin Luther devoted his life to God he began studying the Bible, where he read for himself what it said about having faith in Jesus. In his, in his reading, Martin discovered the very good news that we are saved by grace through faith. So Martin Luther, he had been so worried that God didn't like him. He was always worried that God couldn't forgive him because he did bad things. But when he was reading the Bible, he realized that all of us do bad things, and God always forgives us. And we're saved because God has lots of grace. So can you say that? God has lots of grace. God has lots of grace. All right. Martin Luther didn't like what the church was teaching about faith and good works. He especially didn't like the teaching that Christian, Christians could go to heaven faster by paying money to the church. So he wrote down 95 theses. So that's what you saw on the door. He wrote down 95 theses explaining his disagreements and shared them with others for them to read. Now, do you think that took a lot of courage, right? If everyone agreed with the same thing and you didn't agree, to go up there and post, this was kind of like a bulletin board, possibly. So he posted all of the things he wanted to change because he felt like the church was taking people's money and telling them if they gave more money, God would love them more or forgive them more. But he said, nope. We give money because we want to help the church, but we trust that God always forgives us. Not everyone agreed with Martin Luther's ideas. They were so mad that they brought him before the Holy Roman Emperor and asked Martin Luther to take back everything he said, but Luther refused, and he stood by his beliefs. How would he feel at this picture? So are there a lot of people here, right? 
yeah, can you imagine sitting in a room with all of these powerful people and everyone saying, you gotta change your mind. And he says, nope, I don't wanna change my mind because I don't think that's right. Yeah, you'd be scared. Have you ever had to stand up for something that you thought was right even if other people didn't agree with you? Right, it's hard to do, but we ask God to help us to do it. Martin Luther's life was in danger. On the way back to his home, a carriage was riding and was a carriage was riding in and was surrounded by the riders. The carriage that he was riding in was surrounded by riders. Were they enemies? No, the riders were friends. They'd come to take Martin away to a castle where he would be safe. So Martin Luther is riding in here, and you've got all these people. Were they here to hurt him? No, they were actually, they were just kind of like pretending. They, they pretended to kid, kidnap him. They were his friends, and they took him away, and they hid him in a castle so that no one could hurt him. So that's pretty good friends, pretty brave friends. So what's he doing here? Can you tell? What, what is Martin Luther doing here? He's writing. He's writing, and this is kind of an interesting thing. Before we had computers, and before we even had copy machines, they had what they called a printing press. And they would take all of these letters and they'd put them together and they'd stamp them. And it was kind of like a copy machine. Yeah? It's like an old copy machine. It's kind of like typing, but they didn't even have typing yet. So they had these little blocks and they put all the letters in the right order and they make lots of copies. And so we're gonna, we're gonna learn about that. It says Martin Luther kept writing his ideas about God, grace, and faith. His writings were printed and spread far and wide. So this new thing allowed his ideas to go everywhere and everyone could read about him. He even translated the Bible into German so that ordinary people in his country could read it and think about it for him, themselves. So before that, pastors or priests would have to tell everybody what to think. And th this way, he said, I want everyone to be able to read the Bible for themselves and think about it themselves. Do you have something? No, nope, just stretching. All right. Martin Luther inspired a reformation or a change of the church. Many women and men followed in Martin's footsteps by introducing new ideas and big changes. Even today, Christians <coughs> reform the church as we read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow Jesus in faith. So you've got all these people, and they're all sharing their ideas. And you know what, sometimes our ideas don't agree with each other, but we still go out in faith, and we try to share what we think God has put on our hearts for the church, and we act with bravery to say what we think is right. So, you might be looking at this guy and think, I don't look very much like him. How many of you think you look like this guy? This old guy, no, I don't either, but you know what? Each one of us can be a reformer because each one of us can be bold and share what we think God is calling us to do, and help the church follow God in whatever way we can. So this week, I want you to pray that God will help you be bold and have courage to speak out for what you think is right whenever you have to, okay? So please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for Martin Luther. Thank you for giving him courage. Help us to all have courage to speak out for what we think is right. Amen. Well, happy Halloween, happy Reformation Sunday, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope you come back for Trunk or Treat. Please stand for the gospel. <laughs> Gospel according to St. Mark. <coughs> so Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you 
must also be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. That's an awesome likeness, I have to say. <laughs> uh, so, what's in it for me? James and John thought it would mean celebrity, fame, power. And the rest of those disciples, they weren't too excited about what those two were looking for. So Jesus ends up telling them that it's actually going to mean suffering and death. Actually, he put it like this. Well, in my kingdom, it's not like the rest of the world. No, it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. In my kingdom, you get to serve, to sacrifice, to give yourself away for others. In my kingdom, you get to drink the cup. You get to be baptized with my baptism. You get to die. What's in it for me? If this is what is in it for James and John and for those other ten disciples and for folks like you and me, then why would anyone ever want to be a disciple of Jesus? Who in their right mind would ever want to be a part of of this crew who would ever want to be a member, for that matter, of this congregation? Who would ever really care to be a Christian anyway? <laughs> Nobody in their right mind would want any part of anything like this. No, we want to have a church a God, a Messiah that serves our needs, helps us to get to the front of the line. What's in this for me? It sure doesn't look like a whole lot, does it? Who really does want to serve and sacrifice and give themselves away anyway? Who wants to die? Not too many people that I know. And then at the end of today's gospel, Jesus calls himself a ransom. You pay a ransom in order to get someone else set free. You pay the price to get someone else out of bondage. Jesus insists that his coming death, that's going to be his ransom, his sacrifice for us. And so he changes places with us. As Martin Luther once described it, Jesus was the sweet swap for us in his death and resurrection he exchanged our fate for his, our sin for his righteousness, his life for our death. He became a curse for us so that we might be set free, free from that sinful obsession always to serve ourselves, from that sinful obsession always to ask, what's in it for me? 
James and John and the other ten, and even you and I, are unable to let go of our own drive for survival. That's what I think. We can't stop wondering, what's in it for me? <coughs> but Jesus dies for us. And because he dies for us, we can have that place of honor and privilege that we so desperately want. When we come to his table, you know, like this one right here, to eat and drink, he grants us that place of honor at his right and at his left hand. And when water was poured over us in the name of Jesus, at fonts just like that one over there. We were granted a place of glory at the table of God's great banquet. When Jesus became the ransom, when he suffered, died, and was raised again, he did it for you and for me. He did it so that we might sit at his right and his left hand. And because of what he did, we are rich, you know. We have places of honor at his table. We are the sons and the daughters of the king after all. And therefore, we can begin to give ourselves away. Therefore, we can begin to serve and to sacrifice. Therefore, we can afford to let go, to die, to drink the cup, to be baptized with the baptism. In the drama of our liturgy, we get to act out this new kind of life that already belongs to us in Christ. We get to drink the cup and be baptized with the baptism and let go of ourselves and be a servant and die. We begin the service by confessing our sins. Hey, if there's anything like dying a little, it's admitting that we're wrong so very often. Yet we get to confess our sins. We get to die a little because we already have been forgiven. We already have the seats of privilege in the kingdom. We get to give our money in an offering. Think about it. I mean, can you believe that? Giving away the most important source of power and prestige that our world has and expecting to get nothing in return. Giving away our money for the sake of others, for the mission, for the sake of the mission of this church. And at the end of our service, we are reminded to go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs> That's right, serve the Lord. Give ourselves away for the sake of God, not for what we can get out of it, but for the sake of God. What's in it for me? That's no longer any kind of an issue. But it is so difficult for congregations in this world not to be concerned about their own survival. It is so difficult to be a servant, to give the life of the congregation away for the sake of the world, 
when there are bills to pay and, yes, salaries to meet. It was 40 years ago, right about now, that one of my confirmation students got herself into some real trouble. I had been her teacher for less than two months. I had, that was my first uh, call uh, church. I had been there for less than six months. I can still remember her name. She was in eighth grade and she was arrested for car theft and being held in a locked juvenile facility over in Red Wing. I mentioned to the senior pastor that I wanted to make sure that I went to see her the next day, even though Red Wing was a little ways away from where I was serving. He wasn't real keen on the idea at first, but then ended up saying, well, <clears throat> if that's how you want to use one of your vacation days, I guess, I guess that's your business. And of course, the discussion that he and I had, that was really only the beginning I heard lots of things from lots of people. That was a big, huge church. And everybody had at least one opinion that they wanted to share. For heaven's sakes, Martin, it's just a little girl. Why get too worked up over it? Martin. She's only in eighth grade. What's the big deal? And then, of course, of course, a number of people were careful to point out, you know, Martin, her family doesn't even belong to this church. I had, I had no idea at that point that, uh, that how many times I would hear statements like that from different people over all of these years. And I didn't have any idea either how many locked juvenile facilities, adolescent treatment facilities, adolescent psych units, to say nothing of time spent in courtrooms standing up and advocating for young people that I would experience over the years either. I ended up visiting that young lady and eventually the comments let up at least to a degree. But that didn't happen <clears throat> until one day at coffee, an old retired teacher stood up who wanted to remind that church why they were there in that neighborhood in the first place. They were there, she told them, to serve, to give their lives away as a ransom for many. Even for those young people in the neighborhood. And yes, she said, even those that came from families that did not belong to our church. What is in it for me? Well, what's in it for you 
and for me. As we sit in our places of honor in the kingdom is this. We have the privilege, the honor, the opportunity to give ourselves away, to serve, to die for the sake of the gospel out there in the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the only way to live in Jesus' kingdom. It is, after all, our baptismal calling, and it most certainly is our Reformation heritage. Amen. Why don't we continue our worship by singing our hymn of the day. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before I continue with the prayers, I want to say a word of thanks to Pastor Martin for preaching today. Sometimes on Reformation Sunday, we can get so focused on who Martin Luther was that we forget the theology he was about. Uh, a little trivia, Martin Luther actually didn't want the Lutheran Church to be named after him. Um, he wanted to point to Christ and grace and love and service. And so thank you, Martin, to, for your words to help us remember that focus and Luther's desire in that today. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, we pray for members struggling with their health, relationships, or well-being. Bring your healing to them. 
sustain and guide those who care for them. Mary, Dennis, Kathy Summers, Kathy Crone, Rosie, Glenda, Doris, Val, Pearl, Zach, Gail, Joanne, Linda, Todd, Charlene, Marilyn, Julie, and Denny. God, be with your members in assisted living and care facilities. In this time of difficult staffing situations, provide for them. Surround those who feel lonely or forgotten with your care. We especially remember Sandra Jones, Roger, Diane, Betty, Joan, Jean, and Sandra Marsh. Lord, we pray for our family members and friends who are struggling near and far. Heal and guide them. We especially remember Barb, Teresa, Megan, Stan, Tammy, Mark, Joe, Butch, Josh, Tom, and Brad, our servicemen and women, and Love Inc. God, our parent, you call us your children and have made us siblings through your son, Jesus. Heal the church's many divisions, bring understanding and peace where there has been contention and strife and unite us in one body through the love of Christ. God of grace. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for those who are victims of the main shooting. Help us to find a way to live in peace and safety. God of grace. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for our farmers who are working to finish their work. Keep them safe and prosper the work of their hands. God of grace. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for our trunk or treat today. May you help that time foster our relationship with the Methodist Church. May all who come be received as Christ himself. God of grace. Here God, our creator, your hands have made the heights of the mountains, the depths of the sea, and the life that animates all creation. Bring relief to areas harmed by wildfires, floods, storms, and human carelessness. Renew the face of the earth. God of grace. Amen. God, our ruler, the nations rage and the kingdoms shake, but your words stand fast forever. Let your justice and peace roll down like waters wherever there is strife, injustice, war, or religious conflict. We especially pray for the Middle East. We ask that you would be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, be with those who are living in fear, we ask that you would guide all of those making decisions and help us to find a way to live in peace and care for all. God of grace. God, our reformer, you make all things new. Free us from complacency, open us to unexpected ways, and kindle zeal in us for the future. We pray for young people affirming their baptism. With them, stir in us a des desire for your wisdom. God of grace. Gracious God, we pray for the upcoming confirmation retreat. May you use that time to draw our youth closer to each other, closer to us, closer to you. May you keep everyone safe. God of grace. God, our Savior, you have made yourself known in the lives of all who have died in the hope of your grace. We give thanks for the witness of the reformers like Martin Luther and for all whose example has brought us closer to you. Gracious God, we especially remember Hilda today. We thank you for her life well lived. We ask that you be all with all who are traveling for that service, be with all preparing for it. Give us a good day of honoring her and honoring you tomorrow. Keep us safe. God of grace. Amen. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. As a sign of that peace, let us share the peace with those around us. Peace. 
may be seated as we continue worshiping God with our tithes and offerings. As a part of our Cultivating Generous Congregations program, we continue to lift up a moment in the life of our congregation to remind ourselves what we <coughs> make happen here together by God's grace. And today, I'd like to have Brenda share some of the exciting things that are happening with our youth. Can you show the picture? It's been a busy fall for the youth. The beginning of October, we continued our partnership with the Methodist Church, and we went to Okoboji for the outreach at the Lutheran Bible Camp there. The kids had a lot of fun. They played kickball, bowling with a football, and cornhole. We had dinner, s'mores, and a worship service by the lake. This coming weekend, we are attending confirmation camp at Shatek. Thank you so much for your continued support of our youth programming. God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our sending song, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Amen. 